Hey guys, so just continuing to work on the uh, the tent trailer countertop uh, with the Corian. Got all the pieces cut out yesterday, and today what I'm doing is trying to mirror them up so I get a really, really good joint um, when I put the pieces. So there's actually six pieces that are going to make up the whole countertop here. Um, and so I'm just, what I'm doing is actually using the router here, using the router to route between uh, securing them down with clamps and then uh, routering between the two the two pieces here um, so that you get a mirrored a mirrored image of the cut between both uh, between both pieces of the Corian and you get an almost seamless or perfect um, join so that's what I'm doing here and uh, see if the camera can pick this up I just did this one and I don't know if you can see it here, but there is a join there. Now, th there's a little bit of height differential between these two, which will go away when I uh, when I clamp it and glue it. But I don't know if you can see that join right there. I'll show you on the edge so you can see. There it is on the edge. See that? There's that. And that's the beautiful uh, finish that you can get when using the router trick. Um, let me, as an example, let me just put this one together. This one I've not done yet. And on here, you'll see a distinctive line. You see that distinctive line between the two? And if you, if I hold the camera up here, I don't know if you can, the camera will pick it up. You can actually see a gap. Although I've got them pushed tight together, there's actually, you can see air or a gap between them just because of slight imperfections, you know, uh, on the cut. So that's the beauty of doing it uh, this way. And there's the, again, the example of, there's my fingernail is on this line where this one is so what a difference that makes so I've never done this before and frankly I am no expert on it I am learning I'm into my fourth cut doing this so if anybody really wants to know how to do this well don't go by this video on this particular aspect of it I think there's other videos online that you can probably go and watch or get a better idea on it but yeah I'm impressed it's kind of cool so just thought I'd share that with you hey guys I thought I might as well just show you what I'm doing to make this uh, router cut briefly so I'll show you what I'm doing here so uh, here take a look down here um, what I'm doing is the first step uh, on the left for me I'm, I'm a right-handed person I'm, but on my left hand side what I'm doing is I've put a piece of very thin door skin that runs the length of the material okay all the way down here you'll see the end of it sticking out here to lift the one piece up ever so slightly now these pieces are roughly speaking one foot wide and by lifting that up that little bit, it gives us about, you know, a few degrees, maybe one degree, a few degrees of difference between this. The reason for that is that when the two pieces then are cut, they'll be cut with a mirrored cut, they'll then kind of fold together and that top edge will mirror exactly uh, together, okay? Um, so that's one of the main tricks to do this is, again, door skin, it's like um, one gosh what is that 1 16th 1 32nd I'm not too sure you know what I mean by door skin this stuff okay use that just a, a tiny piece not the full length you just want a little strip of it on your leading edge okay then I'm using a quarter inch um, double fluted bit okay so let me show you here so this is a quarter inch double fluted bit just meaning it's got a cutting carbide cutting surface on both sides okay so when it goes down, when it's going, it's actually cutting out both pieces over the channel at the same time. And that is a half inch bit, okay? That's a half inch bit. This is a 3 8 inch wooden spacer, which I just ran off on my table saw. So that's 3 8 okay? As I mentioned, it's a half inch bit. So that's going to take a 16th of material off of this piece and 1 16th of material off of this piece uh, to make up our full half inch, okay? Uh, roughly speaking, of course, all right, um, when you're doing this, it's probably best to do these joins and then cut your piece to size fully afterwards, but um, that's what I'm doing. Uh, bottom line, we're just taking a tiny little bit of material off of each side with the idea of then we can mirror these two pieces up together. So that is, uh, that's the process that I'm using. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to hold this up here, make sure before I actually do the job, I actually always try to take a look and see if I've got everything in line where I need it to be. And sure enough, this clamp is in the wrong spot, so i got to move it. Move that clamp a little bit. 
Okay, let's see if we can uh, make the cut here. Again, I'm just gonna do a little test here before I actually do the cut. Hold my, my rotor up and have a little look. Make sure we're all lined up where we need to be. Oh, the other thing I should mention as well, I have a um, this piece of wood here just as a straight edge. And not so much a straight edge, I do have the a square base on here, and it's not so much a straight edge for me to hold against here, although if my measurements were perfect, a person could certainly do that. It's more for me to eyeball it to make sure that I'm within lines. The, as I'm pulling the rotor back, I'm going to be referencing the distance between my rotor blade, and, or my rotor uh, base, I should say, and this straight edge just to make sure that I'm relatively consistent all the way along. It doesn't matter that much because um, at the end of the day we're going to get a mirrored cut anyways but I want it to stay relatively in line here. Um, the rotor bit will naturally follow the channel for the most part unless you really veer it off to one side but it'll naturally follow the the channel so um, that should be all the all of the alignment that we really need to do. So. Let's just take a look here, maybe one last look, and then we'll give her a go. Okay, let's, let's do it, eh? Okay, so let's see what sort of job we did there. Um, give you an idea on how this whole thing works. Take all the clamps off. Let's see if I grab this one from the wrong side too. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, get this out of the way. Stuff. That's one thing about this stuff. It makes a hell of a mess. Uh, so wherever you're doing it, just just know you're gonna make a hell of a mess doing it. Um, and obviously to get a good fit here, we want all that stuff out of our way. Okay, so let's just put our two pieces together and see what sort of job we did. Oh, you know what I forgot? Got to take out my spacer. Yeah, there's that spacer of door skin I was mentioning. Okay, so that's got a comes out of there. Jay has this stuff. Okay. Well, good enough for now. Good enough for a test fit. And so there you go. And yeah, that's really great. So now this, these pieces are a little bit, uh, again, these were end pieces and they're a little bit um, uh, warped, shall I say. But I'll be correcting that when I glue them. But it looks, you can trust me, it looks really, really great. So anyways, guys, hope that helps, um, helps you guys out a little bit. And uh, yeah, let's continue on. The next part of this project is going to be to glue all these pieces together. I'll be doing them one at a time and uh, yeah I'll talk about that in the next bit. Okay so uh, now I've just been gluing up the seams. I've been using uh, some JB Weld uh, Marine Clear epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy that I've been using and uh, I've there's actually one, two, three pieces here. So one, two, three pieces. I've dabbed a little bit more glue on this one because I actually had some ridges I'm trying to fill in here. But uh, this is coming out pretty darn good. I don't know if you guys can even see a seam here. I have to look hard myself to see it. But if I come down to the edge, then you'll see where it is. So there's the edge, right? And then you look down. It's a pretty darn decent seam, eh? Like it's pretty much invisible. And this was only my second attempt. I'm actually doing this in two pieces. So there's actually six pieces in total. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I just finished gluing these pieces together here. I'm gonna leave them till tomorrow to uh, make sure they're fully set before I start sanding them. Um, uh, what I'll do is I'll actually film that sanding process, but essentially what you do is you start with 220 grit uh, or thereabouts uh, with a, um, 
uh, with uh, silica oxide sandpaper on a random orbit sander and you do that and then you come back with a uh, finer grade of paper um, and I do that and then you use uh, a, some scotch bright uh, also on a random orbit a sander and it actually completely smooths it out and gives you that nice finish back again and it works really well I'm really quite impressed with this I'm just doing this for my tent trailer but trying to do it you know, as good as I can, frankly, just as practice for if ever I do this for a house. But I have to say, some of these joints, like even my very second attempt here, the first one was good, second one's great. I mean, you, you got to look hard to see it. It's pretty impressive. So um, this method definitely works. So anyways, I'm, I know I'm having fun doing it so far. So yeah, cool. So we'll carry on. I will shoot some more video tomorrow of the sanding once the thing all sets up.